It's finally time to end the 2023 rundown season with the line that expanded the most, G.I. Joe Classified Series. Fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. Special shout out to all our channel members, including our Captain Tears, Infinity Wartorn, Spin Dash 54, Super Shadix Boom, Toma K, MJ Klein, Infinite 1985, SSJ4 Jason, Oma Ender, Scrub Lord Gaming, Psycho O's, Kyle, Jamie's World, Matthews Laura, Don Don Ranger Power, Donnie Waldman, Jark the Grid, Jeremy Carr, It's La Dorman, Toku Texas Cosplay, Common Pikachu, Sutargo's The Kaiju from Krypton, Brendan Overland, and AR Gene Carco 27. If you'd like to join, hit the join button down below for more details. Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome to my 2023 G.I. Joe Classified Series Rundown. For those that may have missed the ones in the past, the Rundown series is where I take a look at the entire year's worth of figures. We have already done rundowns for the 2023 releases for Power Rangers Lightning Collection, for Transformers Legacy Evolution, and of course, Marvel Legends, which was the thing that started the whole series. There also is a playlist of all the rundowns if you want to watch them all. This is going to be the 2023 G.I. Joe Rundown. And yes, I am aware that we are in mid-March, and it usually doesn't take this long for these to happen, but Hasbro put out so much product between all four of the lines I cover, I had to space it out for my own mental well-being and physical well-being, but we're finally getting G.I. Joe done. And in fact, the thing I wanted to highlight is the, the, the nature of the rundowns is that every year this seems to be the lines get a little bit bigger, where some may stay more consistent like Power Rangers or Transformers, G.I. Joe exponentially gained in size. But of course, what is considered a 2023 release? Well, it's simply just two guidelines. First of all, if it's a retail release product that's available at all retailers, it needs to be released by December 31st at at least three retailers. That way we kind of avoid those early leak out things that don't really come out everywhere for the whole year. That sort of idea. And with G.I. Joe, we were running really close to the deadline at the end of the year. The second rule is that if it's an exclusive, it must stock at the store it's exclusive to. So if it comes out, you know, say somewhere overseas, I'm not going to count it. You know, if it's a Target exclusive in the U.S. because this is a U.S.-based company and a U.S.-based line, if it didn't hit Target, it didn't count. That sort of idea. So you're probably wondering, how many releases was it since you said there was so many? Well, it was 57 releases for the year. Four retail waves were released. Seven Hasbro Pulse exclusive releases and 11 Target and 11 Walmart releases. That was quite a lot of figures. We usually didn't get this many for G.I. Joe. In total, we had 73 figures and vehicles released, and of those, I picked up 67. Also, hence why this video has taken a while. All these figures come with a ton of accessories, which is great until you're trying to film 67 figures in a row with all their crazy cool accessories. So if I end up skipping over some of the details about some of the more repaint-based figures, that's why. Just to keep this simple and more streamlined and also take a little bit of a load off of me workload-wise. So if you're wondering how the line has increased over time, when the line launched in 2020, we got 18 figures in that year. Then in 2021, we had 22 figures, so a little bit of a steady increase. In 2022, we jumped to 32 figures, which was, you know, about 10, about 11 more just a little bit of a jump, but then from 2022, which reminder is 32 figures, 2023 had 73 figures and vehicles. So we jumped from 32 to 73. It's, om it's over a double amount of releases in 2023 compared to 2022. And so far at the time of recording, we've seen 33 releases go up for pre-order for 2024. So it's looking like next year's rundown is also going to be a lengthy one. And I've already started filming for it on the stuff that I've already gotten in for 2024. And in fact, I have two major problems with the line. While G.I. Joe Classified Series, I believe, is still the best Hasbro collector's six-inch line on the market, I think it has the least amount of problems and it's the most satisfying. Part of why these rundowns take a while to put together is... I have to come up with different ways of saying it's a great figure because a lot of them are. There's very few I would consider like even mediocre. And so because of that, it is kind of hard to collect the line when they put out that many releases in a year. There was a lot of product and specifically a lot of condensed product. Early in the year, we had gotten a wave plus some exclusives to kind of, you know, start the year off. We got a few figures. Then we had the very successful HasLab Dragonfly campaign. Now, smartly, from a business perspective, they didn't really release anything while the campaign was active. And in fact, I did back one, and we will look at that in next year's video. 
But the Dragonfly was successful, it reached all its tiers, and it was a raging success. And then after the Dragonfly ended, particularly between September and December of 2023, we got the rest of the year. And I'm talking, there is like so much that came out in that last chunk of the year, and particularly the last quarter, we had two retail waves drop almost back to back, like on the same days in November. It was a little rough for me to keep up with, in addition to everything else, and uh, I sort of just blurred out what order things came out in. It just became a blur of like, all right, this is shipping, this is shipping, this is shipping. It was just about getting money in the right places so that those pre-orders could process. And that is stressful. So I'm hoping that for this year, for 2024, uh, Hasbro is going to spread it out a little bit more. Even if we do have a HasLab, I think you just got to, you know, not release anything, but not hold it off till later because there was just a ton of stuff. And looking forward into 2024, I'm looking to see where I can start dipping out of some stuff. I still want every named Joe and Cobra, you know, I still want, you know, unique figures. I still want some of the stuff that's coming up, but I do need to have some kind of break point if they're going to continue to pump figures out the way they are. Because collecting Tiger Force, Python Patrol, Crimson Guards, and Night Force has been great, but am I going to add Mad Marauders on top of that? or any other subline, that's for me to figure out at a different point. The other thing that I have noticed with the 2023 releases in particular, while it still kind of affected some of the previous ones, but this year I noticed it the most, a lot of figures are very stiff. Uh, they are really sturdy because they are using, you know, nice high quality plastic. And a lot of them are using inset pins, which means there's a more compaction of the plastic around the joint. But I've also seen that that has led to some stiffness in general that makes me worried about breakage. Uh, I did specifically have a figure break on me this year while filming, and I will explain how that happened and what went on with that, and we will get to that when we talk about that figure, so that way you guys can see how that worked out. But I was having issues with just getting joints to move. I had to do a lot of heating with hair dryers to get you know, head swapped and, and some other things. And so for the one figure that did break, that was kind of a weird situation, but we will talk about it in detail so you guys can avoid that happening to you. And then the other thing with the stiffness is that, you know, I worry going forward with smaller joints if they're still stiff. You go to just move them thinking it's going to move because there's a 4 plus on the box and they don't quite do that. So it's something I want to see Hasbro kind of work on is to make the figures, you know, still solid, but not so stiff because they're feeling uh, sort of NECA-y. And I, I love NECA figures for what they are, but those are kind of more like, you know, carefully pose it, you know, heat it up hair dryer, carefully pose it, set it on the shelf, you're good, while these are advertised at a 4 plus rating by Hasbro themselves. So that's pretty much my only two concerns. I think there was just a lot of product and the stiffness across the board was a little bit uh, hard to deal with. Uh, the nerve endings in my fingers were kind of trashed after filming. So that's just the only two things I really want to bring up. And if that's the only two things, the line's doing pretty good. I thought distribution was pretty solid as well. I didn't have any trouble getting anything. Even exclusives like uh, from Walmart or Target, those pre-orders actually did seem to ship and the Target exclusives were well stocked in stores. Not sure about the Walmart ones, but Walmart shipped all my pre-orders that I did make. So it's just going to be, you know, continuing to see how distribution and retail does work itself out. And on that note, we do have 73 figures and vehicles to cover, and we got to get the ball rolling. And so for that, I would like you to all please press the like button and the subscribe button, the notification bell if you haven't already. Helps the video get out to more people and helps make all the work I put into these more worth it. Uh, let's get the widest audience possible here. That would be fantastic, and I appreciate all your support on that. So now, let's begin the 2023 G.I. Joe Classified Series Rundown. As usual, we're going to go in number order as opposed to release order so that it's easier to track. First up, number 40, Tiger Force, Duke, and Ram Cycle exclusive to Target. So here we have Duke on the same mold as the number 4 Duke from 2020, and he is now in Tiger Force colors. He pretty much comes with the same accessories Duke came for before, the backpack, the pistol, the binoculars. But he does get a new rifle, a more realistic one as opposed to the sci-fi one he had before. Duke also includes a repaint of the Ram Cycle that was originally included with Breaker this time in Tiger Force colors with special printing. What's really cool is the side minigun has a Tiger Force logo, but it is fully obscured when you put it into the sidecar component. That sidecar can go onto the side of the Ram Cycle. This makes for a pretty nice set. You get a new Duke plus the Ram Cycle itself, so if you missed out on any of these previous components, it makes for a good package overall. 
Next up, number 54, Tiger Force Bazooka, exclusive to Target. This came out prior to the regular Bazooka and was our first shot at the character. Bazooka doesn't come with much besides, well, his bazooka and a removable helmet, and he looks really good. Plus, all four bazooka missiles are independently molded and can be loaded into the back of the bazooka. This allows you to have different poses of it just being loaded, already fired, or in the middle of firing. Next, number 55, Tiger Force Rakondo, exclusive to Target. This was our first chance at Rakondo before his 2024 retro card release. And he looks spectacular. That mustache is amazing. He's got a pistol and a removal hat. Plus, he comes with his knife that you'd expect when he's doing rakondo y things. Plus, he comes with a nice new rifle that we will see a few more times in the line. Number 56, the Python Patrol Officer, exclusive to Target. This is your Cobra Officer, now in Python Patrol colors, and I actually really like the bright yellow. Comes with the standard loadout you'd expect from a Cobra Officer, including this awesome rifle, plus the standard pistol and knife loadout. He also comes with a second gun that loads into the holster on the back. Overall, another nice army builder piece. Now, number 58 is Mad Marauders Barbecue. Mad Marauders is the new name for Slaughter's Marauders, and I just can't start another subset of teams. It's gonna hurt me at some point, but this is my breaking point. Number 59, CoverGirl from Retail Wave 11. CoverGirl looks fantastic overall. She seems like she's mostly a new mold, and she looks terrific in updating the 80s look to the modern day. She's loaded out with weaponry, not only having a pistol, but also a shotgun. And in reference to the fact she is the mechanic for the vehicle, the Wolverine, that her vintage figure was packed in with, she has a data pad with the Wolverine specs and a wrench to work on it. Number 60 is the Crimson Bat, part of Retail Wave 11. This figure is exactly what you'd expect. It's the great battle android trooper figure from last year, but now in all red. And of course, it comes with the battle damage head and the battle damage plate, plus all the swappable hands. It's this exact same loadout as the previous Bat releases. Number 62 is the regular bazooka from Retail Wave 12. This bazooka is the regular edition of the Tiger Force one we just looked at. Instead of a white shirt, he has a red one. Instead of tiger pants, he's got normal pants. Though something of note, the elbow is a little bit different than the forearm and bicep color, which isn't as apparent on the Tiger Force version. Bazooka's got a removable helmet, great mustache, and overall great look. But one of the unique twists compared to the Tiger Force version is that two of his bazooka missiles are specially painted in special details, which I think makes this version a little bit more unique. Number 63 is the regular version of Outback following the Tiger Force from last year, and he was released as part of Retail Wave 11. This Outback looks awesome. He's now got a white shirt as opposed to the orange from the Tiger Force, and he now has his normal red hair as opposed to the gray hair from before. Though much like with Bazooka, his elbow is definitely a different color than his bicep and his forearm, and this for sure wasn't a problem on the Tiger Force version from last year, which matched a little cleaner. But overall, he comes with a standard loadout of a pistol and a knife. Plus, he comes from a flashlight, exploring the outback, and a shovel in case he needs it. In addition to that, he comes with one firearm weapon, which has a shoulder strap for him to wear. Number 64 is Lieutenant Falcon from Retail Wave 11. Falcon here is mostly a new mold, but unfortunately I think he's one of the weaker figures of the line. And a lot of it comes down to this head sculpt just not looking right, especially with the way that they did the mouth. He looks sort of disproportionate and uneven. It's nice he's got a removable hat, but this isn't a head that's a winner. He does though come with the standard loadout of a knife, which stores in his backpack for a nice change. Plus his rifle is pretty cool looking and it has a movable stock that can fold up or move back for support. Number 65 is Tiger Force Dusty, exclusive to Target. This is essentially the Dusty figure from last year, now done in Tiger Force colors. He's all green this time as opposed to the tan from before, and I kind of like this color scheme more. Other than that, he has the same loadout, the one gun, the knife, the goggles that fit on his head, plus his hat, and the separate set of goggles that go on his hat. Number 66 is the Python Crimson Guard, exclusive to Target. They really took the Crimson out of the guard here, but I kind of dig the color scheme. The bright colors are a nice contrast to the other guards. He does, of course, come with the standard loadout the Crimson Guards have, which is pistol and knife, plus a sword and a rifle with a bayonet on the end. It's a good addition if you want something different in your Crimson Guards. Number 67, Snowjob, releases a deluxe pack as a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Snowjob is one of the most packed-to-the-teeth figures in this line, and the fact it all fits on his backpack is incredible. So not only does he have an unhooded head and a downed hood in addition to his standard pistol, he also comes with a hood up head to go with that downed hood and a sniper rifle for the snow. Plus, he does come with snowshoes, which are fixed to his feet or hang on his backpack and complete with the hood up and the goggles on with ski poles in hand and the skis themselves, Snowjob is going to tackle anything in the Arctic. Next, number 68, the Cobra Valkyries 2-pack, a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. First in this 2-pack is the Cobra Valkyries officer. She's in a blue bodysuit with tan accessories, and she is packed with the Cobra Valkyrie officer, 
who is in blue with black accessories. And then they came with a ton of stuff. So much stuff that I can't really showcase it, but we got multiple heads, multiple weapons, blast effects, different configurations you can do with backpacks and the different smoke effects and the different helmets. So essentially what I'm doing here is showing you some examples of what you can do with the Cobra Valkyries pack without going through every single accessory one by one, considering it'd be a little too much to cover in this format of a video. Number 69, the Arctic Bat, a fan channel exclusive. While using the standard bat body, this has a lot of new overlay pieces and new head pieces to give it a distinctive look. I absolutely love this new head that it was given and the new chest plate with all the weaponry on it. It pairs well with the included pistol. He also does include a normal bat head with arctic polarized put on it and normal chest panels, one with the Cobra logo and one cracked, but I don't feel like using those. Because the arctic bat shines with its uniqueness, its personality, and its threatening aura, especially with that sniper rifle. It also has a chainsaw hand. Once again, a chainsaw hand, it's so cool. Though unfortunately the chainsaw hand really doesn't fit and hold in the standard bat backpack so that thing's gonna be empty. Number 70, Shipwreck from Retail Wave 12. Shipwreck's one of my favorite GHOs and this one is a almost direct translation of the original 80s design. Pretty great head sculpt, pretty great detail between the tattoos, the chest hair, the parrot, the gun, and the other gun that's more of a harpoon style. In addition to that, his pair has a peg leg so she can perch on his rope or on his arm. Adding to that, the hook can be attached to the rope, but the rope doesn't uncoil, so you have to come up with your own solution for that. Also, what's cool is his hat and his hair does remove, and he does have a normal hair without the hat attached that you can put on. Unfortunately, I somehow lost Shipwreck's wig, so we're just going to have to go with this picture. Number 71, Rock and Roll from Retail Wave 12. Probably one of my favorite figures of the year, Rock and Roll is an update to the 80s design that keeps the original aesthetic. He's got the beard, he's got the bullets, he's got the arm tattoos, and he's got a really cool radio. And I do mean he has the arm tattoos. They're incredibly detailed and well applied. He even has a good old rocker hand. He also does come with a standard pistol, and he comes with a helmet that has Hang 10 written on it to reference his old Malibu roots. Plus, of course, he comes with heavy machinery to go with those bullet casings he's wearing for fun. Rock and roll is just amazing. This is how you take an original design, but amp it up and make it cooler for a modern era without losing the spirit of the original character. Number 72, Copperhead from Retail Wave 12. Copperhead is pretty much just the 80s design brought to life. I kind of like how we're doing a little bit of a mix in G.I. Joe Classified. He does include a standard pistol, and I like the arm tattoo being a playing card with a skull on it. Plus, he does come with a fancier pistol with a scope that stores in the holster on his back. But really adding to Copperhead's vibe is this massive machete knife that just looks like it could cut through anything. Number 73, Torpedo, also from Retail Wave 12. Torpedo is our first dive suit figure, and he's decked out from head to flippers. Speaking of those flippers, they are movable, and they are removable. You can take them off his feet pretty easily, and they slip back on with peg holes available for the feet. His snorkel attachment is removable, and you can see his face underneath, plus he comes with a standard knife. In addition to that, he does have a harpoon gun and an automatic weapon, so he's decked out and ready to fight Cobra. Number 74, Scrap Iron and the Anti-Armor Drone, a retail partner pack release. Scrap Iron here is an explosives expert and looks really cool, especially with that helmet. But removing that helmet shows that he's not a perfect explosives expert. While yes, he has a pistol, he's got a lot of scars. And just a huge shout out to the sculpting and painting on this figure, all the work that was put into this to give him multiple scars. He just looks so messed up, it's amazing. He also, of course, includes a remote control device, but for what? Well, none other than the anti-armor drone, a nice black tire-treaded drone with a couple missiles. And surprisingly, this thing has articulation and quite a lot of it, so you can position your missiles and aim them wherever you want. The missiles come with blast effects to show them launching, and there's two different distances, which is really, really cool. And speaking of blast effects, there's explosion effects for the ground that you can put all over your G.I. Joe classified display, and that is super awesome. Number 75, Chuckles, which was the San Diego Comic-Con 2023 exclusive. Released as a deluxe figure with a ton of accessories, you can put a ton of them on him with all the storage possibilities. Chuckles here is a pretty much direct update from the classic design with a few little modern flair thrown in, and he has a standard pistol and knife. If you want this espionage guy relaxing and chilling with some tunes, he has some headphones and a cassette player, 
which looks like a familiar Decepticon. But if you want him relaxing on the beach, he has a pair of sunglasses and a nice lay. In addition to this, he has a pair of handcuffs and a pair of binoculars for him scoping out who he's gonna cuff. Chuckles is always gonna encounter trouble, and so he comes with a head that's taken some damage, but of course some brass knuckles to give some damage. Plus a suitcase and the files that he was trying to steal from Cobra. In addition to the broken handcuffs, you can have Chuckles looking like he just escaped from whatever Cobra clutches he was in, and he's on the run, but he's gonna be doing it in style. Number 76, the Range Viper, exclusive to Walmart. Probably the one that's taken the Viper design the farthest, the Range Viper looks amazing with that skull head and that bandolier of bullets. He comes with a standard loadout of a pistol and a knife, but this time the knife looks more like a sigh, and that's just cool. He also comes with a grenade launcher with a turning barrel, which is just the coolest thing to have, and we'll see it more times in this line. Plus, he has a brand new automatic rifle with a loaded magazine cartridge. Plus, to round it all out, he has an axe. Why? You know, range viper things. Number 77 is Night Force Big Ben, exclusive to Walmart. This is our first classified series Big Ben, and I'm sure we'll see a regular one later. And in general, I do like how the paint is so crisp and clean. Overall, a great looking figure. He has a nice sidearm that comes with a silencer. Plus, he comes with a much more heavily armored large automatic weapon. And he comes with another weapon that has a foldable second handle. Just little details I really do like. To tie into the storyline that the Night Force are following Cobra into the dark Energon caves that have infected people, Big Ben comes with a gas mask to protect himself. Number 78 is Tripwire, a partner pack release exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. Tripwire is a bomb defusal expert, and he is decked out in gear to do so. But he does have a nice head sculpt underneath those helmets and a standard pistol. In addition to that, you get an entirely different jacket, as well as a different collar and a different helmet, so you can mix and match whatever look you want for him. Plus, he comes with a remote control device, but what would he need that for? Well, none other than his bomb disposal drone McLeod and his little buddy Aspara. Putting all these three together into one set gives you a lot of options and a lot of display possibilities for a character who's not typically a combatant, and I think that's a cool thing to add to G.I. Joe Classified. Next up, 79, the Televiper and Cobra Flight Pod Deluxe Vehicle Pack exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. Here is our Televiper, one of the other Viper variants we were missing, and it turned out pretty good overall. There's a couple different head options here with two different skin tones, which I think is awesome, gives you a lot of variety in army building. But there's this really cool all-enclosed helmet head that I really prefer. I love the Ghost in the Shell-esque goggles. In addition to that, the Televiper does have a weapon which is attached through a hose to the backpack, and he can hold it pretty good. But of course, the main draw to this is the Cobra Flight Pod, lovingly referred to as the Trouble Bubble. The Flight Pod itself has some really nice details, and even has moving reverse thrusters and removable missiles on the side of the pod, which is pretty cool overall. In addition to that, you can position and pivot the gun, the opening part in the front, and then of course you can lift the lid, undo the seatbelt, and place a figure inside. So naturally the Televiper fits perfectly, there are other figures that will fit inside, you can pick and choose, these things were used a lot in the original show. And honestly a small vehicle like this is kind of fun, especially a flying one, because you can just kind of play around with it pretty easily, just pick up and go. There's also this mine, which is pretty cool looking, you can pop the panel off and see details inside. There's not really a place to store it, so you're just going to have to kind of like wedge it in somewhere. Behind the gun seems to be the best spot, but if you don't have the gun positioned correctly, it's just going to fall right off. Number 80 is Nunchuck, a fan channel release. Nunchuck looks fantastic. Green Camo Ninja is a heck of a vibe, and he has all kinds of different weapons. So starting off, he has these really cool claws that grip on the inside of the hand, so you can actually kind of have him hold accessories if you want. He comes with two swords, and these are unique new swords, and I love the way they look. Nice curved blades. He, of course, comes with a standard issue knife, and also of note, his bandana is articulated. And, of course, he does come with two sets of nunchuck, because he is nunchuck. Number 81 is the Cobra Eel, an Amazon exclusive. This guy reuses a lot of parts from Torpedo, but, of course, makes it Cobra Eel-themed. and looks pretty good overall. The snorkel and headgear can be detached, and he does come with a standard issue knife. Though unfortunately he only comes with a harpoon gun, so he doesn't come with the additional automatic rifle that Torpedo had, which is kind of a weird exclusion. Number 82 is the Crimson Strike Team box set, which was a Hasbro PulseCon 2023 exclusive. Let's start with the star of the show with the brand new Baroness. A lot of new molded parts, and particularly new molded heads. Now the cool part about the new heads is the glass are removable, and the hair is removable, so you get two different options with each type of face. I really do like the thinner, yellow-tinted glasses and the expression on this head for this version of Baroness, but you have the options to mix and match, even mix and match the glasses. And to really get the Cobra vibe going, she has this really cool snake mask with two Venom fangs coming down. It looks really awesome, and the fact you have three heads and two sets of hair is pretty amazing. 
In addition to this, she does come with two pistols, which are silencer equipable. Plus, she comes with two swords, which previously came with her movie version figure. Plus, she gets two automatic weapons, now cast in all gold. Plus, she comes with the Snake Blaster thing the first Baroness release had. Overall, this is a massive upgrade with what we've seen before. So, Crimson Tomax is essentially the same figure we've seen before, same accessories, but now with more red paint. So, of course, he comes with the two knives in addition to his automatic gun weapon. And Zayma is the same story. It's basically the same figure we've seen before, but now all in red. And he comes with the automatic weapon as well as the two knives. All three figures do include gold stands, which is pretty nice, and as a three pack, it's pretty solid. Though I gotta say, Baroness is the true winner of the group. Number 83, Tunnel Rat from Retail Wave 13. Tunnel Rat's one of my favorite G.I. Joes, and they did a great job with this figure. Not only is he heavily detailed, he also is a little bit shorter than the other Joes on average, which is appropriate for the character. Tunnel Rat has a standard loadout of a pistol and a knife, though they are new molds we haven't seen before. Plus he comes with two flashlights that fit in his backpack and his goggles come down over his eyes. And if all that isn't enough, he also comes with a long range rifle, which looks pretty good. They really did a great job with Tunnel Rat. Number 84 is a new vintage inspired Firefly from Retail Wave 13. I really like this Firefly design. I like the previous Cobra Island one with its more modern updates, but this one skews a little more vintage, but not entirely vintage, which I appreciate. He does, of course, have the standard loadout of a pistol and a knife, though the pistol is silencer equipable. And he comes with an automatic weapon and a nice pair of goggles that look like he can actually do some searching. Plus, of course, he comes with explosives, because that's what Firefly does best. Plus, he has an explosives drone, which is a ground vehicle this time, and it comes from the backpack onto the ground. Now, while this drone has wheels, it just scrapes across the ground, because the wheels do turn, but they're just not pinned correctly to turn on a natural axis. He also does come with a remote control slash detonator for that drone. Number 85 is the Crimson Viper from Retail Wave 13. This is the same Viper figure we've been seeing over and over again, but in Crimson colors this time. So of course he has the standard loadout of the goggles and the rifle and the scarf, plus of course the backpack and the pistol. Nothing we haven't seen before, just in new colors. Number 86 is Low Light, also from Retail Wave 13. Low Light has a ton of sculpted and painted detail that give him a unique look, which is good considering he's mostly just wearing a gray bodysuit. He comes with an automatic weapon as well as a small knife for close combat. And he comes with a sniper rifle in a carryable case. This case can also plug into the universal backpack connector, and it even has a plug to carry his normal backpack on top of that, though it does make him very unstable. Low Light also comes with this extra communications device or scope reading thing, not exactly sure what it is. And all this comes together for him assembling his sniper rifle in the case. And what's neat is the practicality to it. All the pieces of the sniper rifle are stored inside the case, so you get the experience of putting it together, and it also means all the parts are removable, which is really, really cool. And so, of course, you can set low light up in sniper poses, and you can kind of see how his eyes look a little bloodshot and strained, because he is working at nighttime. Number 87 is Grunt, also from Retail Wave 13. Grunt here is about as generic Joe as you get, but he does have a little bit of personality to him, which is nice. A lot of that personality comes from his head sculpt, and also the pistol and knife he comes with is pretty standard. Also that neat little computer screen flips down on his chest, which is a neat little detail they didn't need to include, but it's nice. He gets kind of a standard loadout of weaponry, like this rifle, and this other rifle, which looks a little bit different. I don't know the specifics on these. He also comes with a Steel Brigade helmet cast in his own colors, which means you could kind of army build him, but he's still got his name on the front. And unfortunately, while I was attempting to move the head, the neck peg snapped off on mine. I barely gave it any force, and it popped right off, which was a real bummer, because that's the first time it's happened to me with G.I. Joe. Number 88 is Python Patrol Viper, a Target exclusive. So Viper was originally a repaint of Jinx, so it's nice to see the classified Viper be a repaint and reuse of the Blue Ninja. And in fact, she comes with similar accessories. She's got the two Cobra-themed swords and this really cool new skull mask. Plus, they upgraded her to double joint elbows, so that way when she uses the bow and arrow, it looks appropriate. And I also love the little details like the Python Patrol logo on her shoulder. I'm sure we'll see a normal colored Viper later, and I'm looking forward to see how that turns out. Number 89 is Tiger Force Flint, also a Target exclusive. This is pretty much the same Flint figure we've seen before, but now in Tiger Force colors, except there's been a couple modifications accessories-wise. Of course, he does come with the same shotgun and the same pistol, plus his hat is still removable. But now he comes with Rakondo's machete and leg holster, which is a pretty nice addition. Plus, he comes with that same gun that Rakondo came with as well. It's nice to see Flint get some more accessories, because this original figure was a little bit lacking. 
Number 90, Night Force Shooter, an exclusive to Walmart. Shooter's a character with a complicated history to the point where she barely appeared in a previous comic run, so it's nice to see the G.I. Joe team even put her in the line. And what's also great in addition to the standard loadout of the pistol and the knife, she has a distinctive look that I think makes her stand out from the crowd, but also makes her a really interesting looking character. Especially with her long range sniper rifle, a weapon that's typically not seen wielded by a woman in military settings, but it's nice to see the G.I. Joe team mixing up the variety here. And what's also cool is that Shooter comes with three different hairstyle pieces. So this one here is a short ponytail, it's kind of the standard look that's on the box. The second one is more of a straight haired braided look, which is also gives it some distinction as well. And to round out the set, she has a gas mask that is attached to a hairpiece to tie into the Night Force storyline of the Dark Energon Tuttles. Number 91, the Crimson Alley Viper, exclusive to Walmart. This figure is identical to every previous Alley Viper, and it is now in red Crimson Guard colors. So of course it has the flip down visor, the big old shield, and then the gun, plus the knife, and the pistol on the body itself. And of course it comes with the two other weapons as well. Number 92 is Desert Commando Snake Eyes, a fan channel release. I opted to skip this one just because there really isn't a lot of desert stuff. I mean, Dusty's thing is desert. And this is just kind of a weird color scheme for Snake Eyes for me personally, but it does look like a neat figure overall. Number 93, the Snow Serpent, a deluxe retail release. The Snow Serpent here has a couple different features. The one being here, which is the base form that looks like the original vintage one. He has an assortment of accessories from two different guns to some snowshoes reused from Snow Job. Plus a pair of goggles, a bazooka, and the missiles plus the backpack to go with that bazooka. Of course, those are reused from Bazooka. But where this thing really shines is the wolf cape, as well as his wolf hat. This guy has been out hunting apparently. Pair this with the two hip holstered pistols, plus the super rad snowboard, and you get the coolest looking dude in the Cobra army. I seriously just love the way this all came together, and they didn't need to go this hard with the snow serpent, but I'm glad they did. Number 94, a brand new character, Mole Rat, from the Walmart exclusive line. The Mole Rats are investigating the dark energon inside tunnels, and so they have mining equipment and they're prepared for that. So as you can see, Mr. Mole Rat here has got his drill, he's got his meter, he's got his safety harness and his goggles. And he has a canister to safely store that dark energon away, so nothing will go wrong. Oh no, it all went wrong. He's been infected by the dark energon and turned into a zombie. Oh no, the zombie has a gun. This figure's fantastic, and I love that we've got a brand new design to classified in this line. It's so cool. Number 95 is the Steel Core 2 pack, exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. Note that in the vintage line, they were known as the Steel Brigade. This 2 pack features a male and female trooper. This, of course, being the male trooper. A lot of reused parts, but it gets the job done. And the female trooper also reuses a lot of parts, but I think she turned out pretty good. And you also see they have the same size jet pack, which is pretty cool. Much like the Valkyrie 2 pack, these come with a ton of accessories, more than which I can highlight in this single segment. I think one of the coolest things is the jetpacks because that's something where it's iconic to the G.I. Joe movie opening. But overall, you can equip both of them with multiple accessories, giving them different looks. And I like the different helmet options in case you wanted to army build the Steel Core. Number 96, Python Patrol Copperhead exclusive to Target. So regular Copperhead is all suns out, guns out, but Python Patrol Copperhead, he got told, yeah, you need to put those things in holsters, buddy. Other than that, he came with the same weaponry, except his silver gun is now gold, so does that make him a Bond villain? Plus, while he may be wearing more fabric, he's definitely carving a few more people. Is that blood on the blade, or is it supposed to be a python pattern? Number 97, the confusingly titled Python Patrol Cobra Officer, not to be confused with the Python Cobra Officer. This is the second repaint of the Cobra Officer mold for Python Patrol, completely different colors this time. And also different heads. The one on the left is the standard officer head with a red mask, and the one on the right is the Cobra Trooper head from Cobra Island with the mouth plate painted red. In addition to the helmet, you also do get a set of goggles. Plus, of course, standard weaponry of a pistol and a knife, and the standard Cobra Officer weaponry of the automatic weapons. Number 98, the Python Patrol Televiper and Flight Pod. So pretty much the same story as usual. This is the Televiper, but now in Python Patrol colors. It's very bright and fun. Of course, he has the same exact weapon with the hose connecting to the backpack, as you would expect. And the other accessories are what you'd expect as well. A second open mouth head, a fully closed off and visored head, and that mine. Plus, of course, you get the Trouble Bubble now in Python Patrol colors. And what I love, too, is the Python pattern on it, the logos. Everything's been updated to be more Python-y. And, of course, the best part, having two Trouble Bubbles in two different colors. I like this more than just having the same Trouble Bubble multiple times. It's got variety. I like it. Number 99, the Cobra Hiss Driver, exclusive to the HasLab Hiss Tank. This, of course, is the driver of the Hiss Tank and is on a brand new body mold. Very striking red and black color scheme. He actually comes with a pair of fists, which is something we don't see in this line very often, which is pretty neat. He comes with a sidearm pistol, and he comes with a bayoneted rifle, and some really nice paint detail on his arm comm. 
Number 100, the Cobra Hiss Tactician, exclusive to the HasLab Hiss Tank. This was one of six possible color schemes for this figure, which were voted upon by fans, and Tactician Bravo was chosen. Essentially working as an inverted color of the driver, he looks fantastic. Sleek, black and red color scheme. He also comes with the same fists, except now inverted colors, plus the same two gun weapons, except now they have a nice red accent color. Number 101 is the Cobra Hiss Gunner, exclusive to the HasLab Hiss Tank. She is on a brand new mold, but is similar designed to the Hiss Tank Driver. Of course, she comes with the standard weaponries of the rifle and the pistol, and she even has her own sets of fists, which are different molds. Plus, she gets an extra weapon that has a lot of heavy artillery, as well as a hammer for fixing dents in the tank, and a shovel for getting them out of ditches. The three of these together make a great set, but man, something's missing, right? We gotta be looking at something to go with them. That's right, a retro-style Cobra Commander. What, you thought I'd say his tank? This is also exclusive to the his tank. This guy I'm keeping on card for now because I'm pretty sure we're going to get a normal version of this down in the new retro line. He comes with a bunch of accessories, which is nice to see since retro figures tend to skimp out a little bit. And you can see that his Cobra emblem is painted wrong. This is to reference the quote-unquote Mickey Mouse misprint figure of the original vintage line. The back of the card is really nice, super clean, and it has a bio card. Look at all that text. It's stuff we don't get anymore with these retro things. I love bio cards. And now we'll look at the Cobra Hiss, which is exclusive to the HasLab Hiss Tank. This, of course, is the primary central item of the whole HasLab Hiss campaign, and it looks beautiful. Seen here in its vintage toy configuration, it definitely references that original model while updating it and increasing the size. It does have wheels and rubber treads so it can roll all over your table. The back section even opens up so that way you can have seats for more figures. And there is a weapons rack inside to hold all the extra accessories for the pack-in figures. As you can see, the Hiss Tactician is taking it easy back there while he works up a plan. Interestingly, there's this little hitch, almost as if there's something coming in our future that'll hitch to it. The gunner seat up top holds the gunner, and it does rotate back and forth, as well as being able to pivot the guns up and down. Naturally, the driver fits in the cockpit of the Hiss, and of course, that cockpit does open up, and he has a nice seatbelt in there to keep him safe. The interior also features light-up displays and gauges, which is pretty awesome. Also, what's cool is you want to display the engine being worked on. There is a ladder and a removable engine block. Now let's upgrade this Hiss tank to a modern style. Let's get the vintage covers off, and let's place the modern ones in the right pegs, please. You can flip open these little panels on the side and attach some big old ballistic missile pods, which are quite the artillery boost for this thing. Adding to that, a couple extra guns up top, and one little gun going right under the nose of the Hiss tank, popping in nice and easy. The canopy will also be removed and we can swap it out for something a little bit fancier, the modern canopy with extra red highlights and extra features. This is the ultimate Hiss tank. It's taking the vintage design and amping it up to 11 in the best way that Classified knows how. I love the way this looks with all its add-on parts. Adding to this, the guns do rotate there on the front and the missile pods do extend and they do rotate forward and back. It can be a little tricky, but once you get it, you can actually pivot them up and down and all six missiles in each pod are removable. Plus the little guns up top can pivot left and right, up and down. The modern canopy is cool because it actually has side panels, so you can open just one side or both in order to give them an extra view, or you can just open the whole thing. You got options. This thing is also loaded with a lot of light options. There's seven settings to cycle through, from red lights to headlights to backlights to interior lights. It cycles through all of them, and you have different options of how you want to display this. They will stay on for about 10 minutes before turning off on their own. And a Cobra logo projection appears on some of the light settings, but not all of them, but it looks really good. Plus, when you open the back, a light turns on inside so anyone doesn't get lost. And this works like a refrigerator door. When you close the door, it turns off the light. So this is the, obviously the centerpiece of not only the year, but the entire line so far. The Hiss is an impressive beast. But let's see how beastly it is when we take it outdoors. The Hiss may be spectacular, but we're not done yet. 102 is Ripper from Retail Wave 14. Ripper is the next Dreadnought. It's nice to finally get some more of them. There's so many cool designs in that little group. He's decked out with a pistol that has a blade on it and a blade that has a blade on it. He loves blades. He loves blades so much his rifle has a blade on it, just in case he has grenades on his chest. But of course, to live up to his namesake, he comes with this giant Ripper of which actually moves with a hinged gear so you can pull it back and pull it forward in tandem. Number 103, General Hawk from Retail Wave 14. 
As the original field commander of the G.I. Joe team that stepped down in that general position, it's finally nice to get Hawk in the line. Presented here with a little bit of gray in his hair and two different pistols on his body, Hawk also features a pair of goggles. And he also includes a second pair of goggles to go on top of his helmet as we've seen standard in the line. Adding to that, he has a nice shotgun weapon ready to go, and a second weapon that can sling over his shoulder, making for a well-rounded package for the general. Number 104, Agent Helix from Retail Wave 14. Helix is one of my all-time favorite G.I. Joe characters, and I was very excited for her to finally join the classified lineup. She's got dual-wielding pistols, she's got that Black Widow-esque hair, she just looks super cool. If that wasn't cool enough, she's got two katanas. They may be yellow-handled, but the blades are black and deadly. And if that isn't enough, she has a 45-degree angle on that blade. There is no escaping Helix. Especially when she busts out the cyberpunk S Mantis blades on her arms. I love this figure. It did justice to the character. I'm very happy. Number 105, Shockwave. No, not that Shockwave, the G.I. Joe one. And he's Retail Wave 14. As a SWAT expert on the Joe team, he is decked out in gear. He's got two different knives, one of which looks like it's got some extra uses. Plus, he has two guns that can holster on his hips. And of course, he has his SWAT gear, his riot shield, his nightstick, and all the Cobras he's marked off on that shield. Shockwave's a great character. Number 106, another Dreadnought. This time, Buzzer from Retail Wave 14. Buzzer here is one of the more recognizable Dreadnoughts, having a prominent role in the original cartoon. They did a really good job giving him a kind of a grungy paint scheme, plus his standard pistol and knife. His glasses, I had trouble fitting. They're not, they don't fit as well as on Ripper or other people's glasses, but he also does come with two bladed weapons. And of course, he comes with his iconic chainsaw, because that's what Buzzer does. Chainsaws. Number 108 is Shadow Tracker, exclusive to Walmart. This is a relatively modern character debuting in the movie tie-in toy line for Rise of Cobra, and he has an amazing design. The design was ramped up even further in Classified, and he comes with an axe as well as a knife. Plus, a brand new compound crossbow with a silencer attachment? It's really cool looking, and we'll see it again in this line. In addition to that, he has two mask options, either the skull mask or the clear green mask. Either one of them is pretty cool, or you can just wear no mask. Number 109 is Night Force Wolf Spider, exclusive to Walmart. Wolf Spider is a brand new character to the Classified line, and he's so frickin' cool. As an extraction operative, he does have flip-down goggles to see at night. In addition to that, he has a standard pistol as well as the knife that goes into the backpack. He has a gas mask piece to protect himself from dark energon, but he interestingly also only has one eye on that. He comes with the same shotgun that came with Falcon, and it actually is in a little bit of a different color. And surprisingly, he comes with an actual rope for patrolling out of aerial vehicles. I look forward to hooking this guy up to the Dragonfly next year. Number 110, the Cobra Hiss Fire Team box set exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. The set contains troopers and Cobra Hiss colors starting with the infantry. Every repaint of the Cobra infantry, he comes with Bazooka's Bazooka as well as the extra missiles. And going a step further, he includes Scrap Iron's effect parts that allow him to look like he's shooting those missiles. And you also get the long version too, though it looks a little crazy on him. You also have a Cobra Hiss Officer, which feels like we've gotten this mold a few times this year. He comes with some different weapons though, he's got this version of the gun, and he has a different knife. In addition to that, he has a different pistol and a different automatic weapon, so he feels different than the other officers. And our second range viper, who's the brains of the team. This guy just looks really cool in this color scheme, just like he did in the blue. Plus, he has effect parts. I mean, this grenade launcher looks even more impressive when there's an actual blast coming out of it. Plus, he has some cool blue effect parts that add a different vibe to the overall figure. These two guys not only pair well together with their matching color schemes, but they look fantastic alongside the Hiss tank. They are meant to go with this, and that's why they're a nice Pulse exclusive. Rounding out the year was Walmart's last retro figures, including Zartan and cartoon colors. They also did a Storm Shadow, which I can't tell the differences on just looking at it, but it was mostly the same figure. We also got a Crimson Guard with a slightly different face deco, again matching the vintage original line. And Walmart's last retro was Snake Eyes, going for the look of the original Snake Eyes figure and all the retro figures are going to be retail starting in 2024, and that rounds out our year. So that does it for 2023 for the G.I. Joe Classified series. That was everything that came out before 12-31-23, and we will be back next year for the 2024 rundown with hopefully less figures. It was a little exhausting trying to cover all of this. It's just a lot to take care of, because while we, sure, we had more Marvel Legends, like a ton, because we had almost 200 Marvel Legends in that video, there is less accessories and less detail with the Marvel Legends line versus Classified. 
But of course, we will be covering all that come next year. So you want to hit subscribe and notification bell if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you haven't. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below and tell me anything that I may have missed or any questions you have or any kind of details. And also tell me what your favorite figures of the year were if you are collecting the line. Also, be sure to check out the channel memberships on the channel and the join button down below. There are perks like early access to videos and other cool things, so go check it out. There are like member-only updates on videos that go out to everyone who's a member, so go consider joining as a member for as little as $1 a month in the join button down below. You can also find our live streams on this channel Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern, where we talk about G.I. Joe news, all kinds of other stuff and entertainment things, good times all around. If you want to continue the conversation, we have a Discord server in the link below, which you can join and come join the discussion. We have a chat about toys and action figures and all kinds of other cool stuff, so come join, hang out. Also, you can find me on social media, if you wish, across most platforms at SoundOut12. You can also find my awesome graphic designer, who did our wonderful thumbnail for this video, at DarkClaw643 on social media and on Discord. And even if you just want to hit him up and tell him how cool this thumbnail was, that would be awesome, because he did work really hard on it. Also, you can find Hero Club at hero-club.com, entertainment news, and more. And until next time, this is Sandout saying, Yo, Joe!